Today we're on the Oki and about to throw up a game from the Embassy World Championships. The 1992 final is remembered for many things. It was possibly the best ever game of darts seen on TV. Mike Gregory's only world final appearance came in 1992 when he was up against a man called Phil Taylor who had become world champion two years earlier. Gregory lost an epic match 5-6 in sets after missing six darts for the title. The final went to a tie-break leg for the very first time in the World Championship's 14-year history. It's often mentioned when people discuss about the greatest darts match ever played. My first guest had the job of commentating on television on this final. A former player who played county darts for Lancashire, Tony Green was the regular voice of World Professional Darts Championship from the Lakeside Club. He's also fondly remembered as Jim Bowen's sidekick <laughs> in the hit TV darts quiz show, Bullseye. No surprises who my next two guests would be. Mike Gregory was one of the top-ranked players from the mid-80s through to the early 90s. He was seeded in the top four at the World Championships on no less than seven occasions. Although he never won this title, he will always be remembered best for his resolve during this epic and his problems with his Bermuda Triangle. My next guest is probably one of the greatest champions in individual sports. In 1988, Eric Bristow sponsored a young lad from Stoke to help him join the professional circuit. Two years later, Phil Taylor was world champion and returned in 1992 to repeat that success. Even the crafty Cockney could not have envisaged Phil the Power Taylor going on to win more world titles than imaginable and be acknowledged as the greatest darts player of his time. Gentlemen, let's start with you, Tony Green. Now, this final, the 14th in the history, was the first one ever without either Eric Bristow or John Lowe in the final. What was the reaction to that? Well, personally, I thought it was a blessing. I think the crowd did as well, because it put together two great players, Phil and Mike, who was, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, gave us the classic and the best final ever seen, and I think will go on for years more as the best classic. Who did you think was going to win beforehand? Um, Mike. Why? Mike. Well, he'd won everything in the sport, and I would say at, the more, at that time he was one of the top ranked players, but he was doing the performances. And we hadn't seen Phil in the right setting, I think. I mean, we saw him in two years previous when he played Eric, and uh, that went 6 1. You know, I mean, he annihilated Eric. I mean, we knew that Phil Taylor was on the scene. But Mike had been a, around a long time. And we thought that this was going to be his year. But alas, it just gave us one great final, one uh, I'll always relish, and I don't think I'll ever see one like it again. For your point of view, Mike, how, how had you got into that position? What would have been your background? Um, well, I started at four years old. My uh, stepbrother gave me a set of darts and a dartboard, and I said, just go away and practice. And I did for a while, and obviously about 17, 18, I started to go into the pubs. And I actually won the local singles that year. And then he started taking me away to a few tournaments, and I was getting quite good. And uh, then it all came about with, I think it was the British Open, I was a runner-up in against Eric, that gave me a lot of ranking points. And also the same year was the World Masters final, playing Eric again in the final. So <coughs> it actually boosted me up in the rankings, I was think it was something like world number six. And uh, it just progressed from there. But, it, but in your first um, World Championship, 1984, you lost 5-0 very heavily to Jockey Wilson. Um, what sort of culture shock was that? It was a great lesson to be taught. I mean, the, the man was a genius, a really good dart player. And he was a good friend as well, um, which came later, obviously. But, uh, oh, it was just, I couldn't get over like being beat by that many after the way I was playing. Yeah. And double top was my favorite double against Paul Lim. I finished on it six times, six times like the, to actually get through. but. I mean, it was just one of them games, you just got to fight hard and come back again. And Phil, you started with your wife Yvonne buying you a set of darts in 1986. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd watched. There was a young lad I remember from Biddleth. I can't remember his name. I'm sure somebody, somebody will tell me it back home. And it, we went out with some friends. I was working on a sheet metal work place then, and he was playing darts. He qualified for TV, and I remember watching him. And I said, I, I could beat him. And Yvonne said, You don't play. I said, I used to do, and I could beat him, even though he was on television. And I ended up playing him that night and beat him. And then Yvonne bought me a set for my birthday, and that's how it started. I never went, never went out then. So I joined a local, a local league. But you were living at the time um, next to Eric Bristow's pub? The about, pub. I'd say about a mile away, yeah. in a little terraced house. And you went in there and played, and that's how you got well, to I know Eric. I paid seven and a half grand for that house. Seven and a half grand, and I thought I was buying Buckingham Palace. <laughs> you know what I mean? 20 pound a week mortgage, it was, oh, mate. Yeah, and, and then that's how I met, I met Eric through, through Super League, playing, you know, I got invited to play for the Crafty Cockney then, because it was a fantastic venue, that was. It was the best club in the, in, in the whole of Staffordshire. And uh, that's how I met him. Didn't like him, to be quite honest with you. But you I can't say that because I'm with him this afternoon. No, I didn't like him at all. No, no. I thought he was. Uh, why why didn't you like him? Because I like John Lowe. He like he lent you ten thousand to get you going, didn't he? I liked him then. <laughs> <laughs> you, can change, you can change your mind, you know. <laughs> what, what did nice you like fella. about Eric? I always found him a nice guy. Yeah. Well, like it, Eric and John ruled the game, didn't they, at the time? Yeah. I mean, you got you got your favourites as well. You know, Mike Mike was about then when I was watching. I, I love watching Cliff Lazarenko as well. How, and I used to think, why have you not won as you know more than what you've won? But I like John and I like Cliff. Uh, Eric was just a cocky, wasn't he? He was, you know what I mean. So I think the attraction when I went to Cockney, everybody was sucking up to Eric. And I didn't. I used to ignore him, and you know, and, it, and I think that he used to look at me and say, "What's up with him?" And that was the attraction. I think we have become friends then. So, what was the dart scene like in the eighties with television and everything else, Tony? Oh, it was booming. You know, it was absolutely booming. Everybody wanted it, especially ITV. Uh, we'd say it's in greasy and wrestling, and then of course, darts came to the scene, and BBC came in with the World Championship, and it was really booming then. And and the, the fact is the players had something to go for and when you think about it when ITV pulled out of sport on a Saturday world of sport world of sport it was everything went suddenly there was a vast change and it gave the BBC a chance to uh, run a great world championship and world masters and a few international events but gradually they started disappearing and there wasn't much left after ITV pulled out for the so, players. So the world title, because it was the main event live on the BBC, became even more important for the that sport. That was it. It was the embassy then, you know, all right. They're about to pull out for obvious reasons. But it was the greatest championship in the world. Saturday that afternoons was ruined, wasn't it? <laughs> you know what I mean? The wrestling on a Saturday yeah. was great. Yeah. You know, the old ladies yeah. sticking the, the hat pins in the wrestlers and everything. It died. Saturday died for us. It was boring. It was brilliant. And then to watch the, you know, the afternoon results as well, Ken Morton and, and whoever did the football results after it was brilliant. But we'll come on to the details of the 1992 final. But that was to rekindle a lot of interest in darts when it was needed, really. Mm. Well, oh, definitely. I mean, when Sky came along, I mean, we was doing quite a number of... Uh, shows for Sky and then like I said it, it, it moved on from there but the the main championship was always as I say the embassy and these is what the lads made their names with. Let's talk about the world title 1990 mm. your first one 125 to one outsider unseeded and you went on to win it was this the first time that people really sat up and took notice of you? For yes that? I'd say so yeah I mean people were getting to know me through the county. I mean, so I was a little cocky bugger myself, you know, as well as <laughs> Eric. Um, so people were, t were taking taking notice of us, you know, you, you, you're young and you, you've got that little brashness about yourself. Um, but that that's what put me back, yeah, they did, did put me on the map, especially in my area anyway, you know, everybody was having a little bet on me, tenors and 20 pounds a month. I remember a little old lady stopping me in the street and she must have been about 70 then and she said she never bets ever and she put a five pound on me and she won. No pressure there, though. <laughs> no, but I didn't know. I didn't know. She told me.